more adult for this kind of age. And I was wondering if you guys are planning to release the book in the States, and if so, changing anything about it or whatnot for the American audience. Well, first of all, everyone, kids in... Did everyone hear that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Kids over here are just a little, a little bit smarter. <laughs> um, uh, we are. We're releasing it in, a, in the state next um, next spring. Yeah, um, and we'll we'll take all all the big words out. <laughs> We've been adding some we're, footnotes this week. Yeah, we're not we're not actually changing any of the. The, the language, we're just kind of adding in a few more definitions. Um, but yeah, you're right that some, some, in terms of the jokes and stuff like that, there is, there are things in the book that'll go over kids' heads, but we kind of felt that that was fine, you know what I mean? We kind of felt the same one like when we were reading Adrian Moe and that kind of thing when we were that age, that like there was loads of jokes that went over our heads, but we still loved it and we wanted to know what those jokes meant, you know, so um, we would do the 1980s equivalent of googling Margaret Thatcher and that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we, Which was what? What was the 1980s equivalent? Ask, ask your mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moogle. <laughs> Good, next. Tell me where There was any ever, di ever any disagreement between me wanting someone who was like my family and them perceiving that as not being somebody that would be in the show. Um, and in a way, I never thought about my family when we had written the script. I kind of, because you have to remove yourself from it, I never thought, oh, that person's like my mother, or whatever. We kind of create these new people, um, and then we are just looking for people who are like that. Uh, because, you know, my family are great and everything, but they're not as interesting as the characters that we come up with. Well, it was kind of helpful. I, when we were writing the first series, I hadn't actually met any of Chris's family. I'd never even been to Boyle. So it, it actually, I think that was quite useful because it helped kind of move it away a little bit, didn't it? Yeah. Because um, otherwise it was just going to be a big documentary, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, there was some, like, we were very lucky with our casting and I remember there being a few disagreements about casting things at the time. Um, and we had a lot of, like, we, we had kind of final say on who got um, cast, which was great because we were going to have to be the ones that were writing for them from then on. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy with it. we got. Well, in that case, well done. Thank you so much, yeah. Yeah, we were, I mean, to be honest, we were really lucky, because I remember after we had seen, like, the hundredth kid that was auditioning, we realised suddenly, the show doesn't work if the kid's not any good. <laughs> and there's an awful lot of really terrible children actors. <laughs> and I promise you we've seen all of them. Uh, and then he came in and, and he needed very little help, you know, he was just naturally very charming. Was there one over here that I thought? Yeah, the blue shirt. Yeah, for Chris. So, um, do you feel ready to be a father? Are you excited? How does it, how does it feel? To be a what? <laughs> 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 I thought it was a rumor. Uh, no, I don't know. I feel good. I feel really excited. Um, you look excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I feel like I'm in that thing, like I'm back in Santa's Grotto. <laughs> uh, no, I'm really looking forward to it. So, um, so you know, now it's just kind of waiting it out, and fingers crossed that it's that it's mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think what we've discovered is it's not me. 